Hi, Stampers, Sandy McIver here, and in today's video, I'm creating with some new products from Picket Fence Studios' April release. First up, this fun new More Hot Chicks stamp that you can line up and repeat stamp vertically or horizontally. I'm going to use my Misty and show you how to do this horizontally to create a slimline card. I like to start in the middle for this technique. I find it easier to line up. I have a piece of three and three quarters by nine inch hammer mill white cardstock and I'm securing it in the center of my Misty for the first stamping. I have my stamp all lined up and I'm using black Copic friendly ink to stamp and giving it a good rub in between to make sure I get a solid stamped image. Next, we're going to move it over to the right hand side and I've left my magnet in there on purpose so that I don't get any ink on this new section until I line up those little hands over on the left hand side. You'll see that I'm tilting my Misty to make sure I'm perfectly lined up and then I switch out my magnets and I'm going to re-ink my stamp and stamp the image again twice and you get a perfect aligned image doing it this way without having to move your stamp at all. There we go. Next we're going to repeat the process this time on the left hand side. So I'm moving my cardstock over and again leaving a magnet in place. I'm flipping it the other way so that my uh, washi tape gets out of the way and this time I'm being brave and I'm just using my finger to hold the lid of the Misty open so that I can line it up. I would recommend the magnet. <laughs> it works a little bit easier. Next I use my Copics for some quick coloring and I'm just going to uh, give you a quick demonstration and I've recorded all the numbers. If you can't see them here, I will list them uh, in my blog post and the downloadable PDF file. So I'll give you a demonstration with this little green chicken. I'm using YG21, YG23, and YG17. I start with the darkest color, which is the YG17, and do my outline and sort of where the shadow would be. Then I blend over it and in a little bit with the YG23, and then I flood the entire chicken with the YG21, which is the lightest of the colors here. And scribble from the edge in, and that pulls some of the darker ink in with it. Next is a yellow chicken and I'm starting with the Y38, Y17, Y15. So darkest to lightest again and adding the highlights and then blending with the lightest color. And as you can see, these are quick and easy to color. Uh, I think I had a movie on while I was coloring this and just having some fun. And for the little combs at the top of the rooster's head, I use the uh, dark of the red, the R29 just to add that little bling at the top. And then for the eggs, I use the BG11 from the blue portion. Picket Fence Studios has an entire slimline die cutting system and there's some new additions this month. This is the slimline scallop frame dies. So obviously there's two scallop frames in two different sizes. There's an inlay and then there's little die cuts for the inside. The circles and the hearts are both inlaid and then there's two sizes of scallops along with some size correct sentiments to go in the center. In addition, we have tree scenery slimline and we have this fabulous new butterfly called the Monarch Butterfly Slimline. Next we have the Graduation. And finally we have the Mushroom Field Slimline. And these all fit inside of the Slimline die cutting system. So we're going to play with a couple of the dies today. We're going to play with the scallops and we're also going to play with the inlaid to create the front of our Slimline card. And now that I have it all colored, I can cut it out. So I'm going to start with a slim line and I'm lining it up trying to decide where I want uh, to do this die cutting. I side over on the left and maybe I'll use that little piece on the right on a different card. So I'm going to grab some tape to hold it down. And a little tip for you when you're using tape on uh, one of these art pieces that you just spent an hour coloring, uh, put the tape on your clothes before you attach it if it's brand new and it picks up a little bit of the lint and it lessens the chance of pulling your paper apart. So I've got this all in here. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and because this is a slim line, what I like to do is do one side first and then turn it around and put the other side through to make sure that I have both the ends cut properly. And that's why I tape down my dies to make sure that I'm able to turn them around and do that. And so when we pull this apart, we've got our pretty little scalloped hens. And so next we're going to cut the inlaid piece. 
So here I'm additioning some cardstock and I chose my Copic colors based on the cardstock that I had so that I knew that I could match it up. So I'm trying to decide between the turquoise and the yellow and I actually decide that I'm going to use both. I'm going to use the yellow for the inlay and I'm going to use the turquoise for my card base. So with the inlays, what you do is you line them up and again add the tape because you're going to cut out that little piece. And so again, run that through your die cutting machine and once you get it done, you're going to gently remove that tape so that you don't pull any of the paper apart and wreck your art piece. And you see that you've got two pieces, but you've also got this little inlaid piece that got cut out. So use that die again and cut one out of the yellow, and that's going to be the inlay for your card. So you have to glue your two art pieces down to a card before you can do the inlay. And there I'm just showing you what's left over. You can use that for other cards and then gently remove this little piece from this die because it is very thin, but it's got beautiful finished edges because of the die. So we're going to do a card base and I have decided that this one seven and a half by nine. So I'm going to score and fold it at three and three quarters and then burnish it really well to get it good and flat before I start attaching all my pieces. So I'm going to start with the outside piece first and I'm using liquid glue on purpose because it gives me a little bit of fudge room if I don't get it on there quite square. And as you can see, I don't, so I'm able to move it around to get it square. So do the outside piece first and then add your glue to the inside piece and you're going to center it so that you've got a space all the way around it for the inlay. There we go, we're just popping it right in there and you can see that you can see blue through it. Give it a good squeeze down and make sure that your chickens are all lined up. So then you take a fine tip glue and you're going to put glue into that little valley all the way around and then we're going to take the yellow inlaid and we're going to pop it in there. And this takes a little bit of patience but again we used the glue on purpose so that we had a little bit of time and I just run around with a piece of Kleenex and dab off any glue that's hanging out. Ian bought some really really rough Kleenex. Is That feels like sandpaper so I'm using it in my craft room. Next I want to add a sentiment and there is a sentiment in the slimline scallop frames and so I tried that in the two colors that I've decided on the card but I decided it covered up too much of those pretty little hens. So there's more slimline dies out this month and this one is the happy birthday word die. And so I decided to cut that in black and I'm going to attach it to the center of my card uh, with glue again with the white glue so that I've got room to fudge it around. And here is an easy way of adding that B back in so that you get it exactly where you want it. I've got the rest of the uh, letters in there because they were all attached but the B is separate so I'm using the negative of my die to put that B back in there, glued it down and then you kind of have to hold on to it while you remove the negative space but it's a great way of lining up perfectly that B. So there you go, some fun new products from Picket Fence Studios along with a demonstration on how to do a simple inlaid die cut to add dimension to your card and you end up with a pretty birthday card. Isn't that nice? So all the supplies I use today are listed underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog where you can download the free PDF file that I did for this card. And thanks for stopping in. And until next time, toodles. Toodles.